And then there's like your peri workout brain fog after hitting a heavy lift and having your post workout nutrition and just being like F-ed at home, just like sitting there pretty much <laughs> like in not incapacitated, but you're not actually like capable of getting high quality anything done. And it's like my day, like I might as well go to bed at this point. But the brain fog, actually, not to come to think of it, I never thought of this before. When you work out, you cause a lot of inflammation in your body of oxidative mm. stress. The inflammatory mm-hmm. cytokines from your immune system go straight to your brain, right? And that we know causes brain fog. So I never mm. thought of that, actually, because I was going to ask you guys, look, I had a theory for a long time, and, <clears throat> and nobody has ever agreed with me about this, to be honest with you. But when I, so I started lifting in high school. So when, when I was in high school, I used to lift weights. Then when I went to college, I was trying to be a nerd. And I stopped lifting weights intentionally to allow myself to focus as well as I could on school. Mm -hmm. But I thought at the time that I just thought I never thought well when I was bigger or eating a lot. But I didn't I didn't put my finger on it at the time. Now, later, what I want to ask you guys is this. Do you think that more muscular people are less cerebral? And why do you think that is if it is the case? So, for example, it could be because their interests are different. It could be because they have less blood flow to their brain. It could be because of this inflammation all the time that's going to the brain, causing brain fog. It could be because they eat all day. We know that ketogenic diets promote clarity of thinking. Fasting does also. So they're eating all day. They have insulin all day. I don't know. But what do you guys think about this? Have you noticed this? I noticed on days where I work out. Yeah, I'm like, my day is barely skating by getting done what I need to get done. And the anything thereafter is like 50 percent of what i could do otherwise and it's really annoying it's like there's like fasting mental clarity and then there's like eating a big giant meal of car brain fog and then there's like your peri workout brain fog after hitting a heavy lift and having your post-workout nutrition and just being like fucked at home just like sitting there pretty much <laughs> like in not incapacitated but you're not actually like capable of getting high quality anything done and it's like my day, like I might as well go to bed at this point because I need to yeah. like recharge and wake up again so I can actually do high quality work. So I don't know, like I know, I don't think it's a coincidence that the bigger bodybuilders don't seem to have as much output of work. Like you never see them pushing hard on social media. They put like the bare minimum in, not all of them, of course, but I mean, a lot of the really big, like super heavyweight dudes you see them doing like the bare minimum in terms of their like athlete contracts and stuff. They post on social media, they're posing updates and stuff, but none of them are putting out consistent YouTube videos. None of them are putting out like information stuff. It's always just like physique update. Somebody films them at the gym and edits for them. And that's kind of it. But most of them, like, it seems like they don't pursue business as aggressively until they're done. And they don't have to focus on like, obviously eating is time consuming going to the gym time consuming but i think a lot of the uh i think it just drains you mentally too you know you have to allocate all of your energy demands go into nutrient partitioning and building muscle and recovery and just smashing yourself every day so like i don't i'm not surprised personally it's It's also a full-time job basically this bodybuilding stuff and you're making yourself physically tired obviously that's the whole point behind hypertrophy and gaining muscle mass and in that process you're making yourself mentally tired And even when you move everything to the later part of the day, that's what I'm doing. I'm training in the evening. So I get all my work done uh, first, right? And then I go to the gym Mm. and then I I might have, you know, a larger carbohydrate meal afterwards just to kind of help me recover and put me to sleep, right? Even though I'm in a ketogenic diet, I can still eat carbohydrates and stay in ketosis the majority of the day. Mm. I have a substantial Mm. amount of muscle mass, so we'll capture it and put me right back into ketosis. It's not a big issue. But when I was training in the, in the morning, half my day would be gone yeah. the training because post-workout I would need to physically sit down and just you know you do some client work if you're coach that's why you know most of the bodybuilders do coaching because besides making the initial program maintaining clients is reasonably straightforward you know it's, it's the initial program that takes a couple of days to really set up but then once you figure out how the client works it's just maintenance so that's why a lot of bodybuilders do do coaching and, and not many have their own website or, or you know, produce, produce their own products. Again, like what Derek said, once they retire. So you'll see that Jordan Peters from now on will start producing a lot more content because he's you know putting this whole bodybuilding on the back burner. And, oh, uh, but I, I loved your video, Derek, about Jordan. It was really so educational. So excellent. 
Oh, he messaged me and said it was a good video and he appreciated it and all that. So great yeah, video. it was good to see. Yeah. So, so, now, so, now, so now that I'm picking it back up, I'm, I really have to hold myself back because I don't want to train to failure and then the next day I have brain fog because I have two leg days a week, right? I have a hamstring leg day, uh, day and, a, and a quad day. And then the quad day has to be on Friday because then Saturday I can afford to be a little bit more tired. Mm. Because if I do, like, ideally you want to train chest on Monday and then quads on Tuesday, right? Everybody does it. It works very, very well when you structure that along with your cheat meal. You got plenty of energy. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I'm I'm messed up, mm. and half as yeah. productive as where I need to be. So now I, re- now besides the the pharmacology that I don't want to push to the next level, now I don't even want to take the training to the next level anymore, um, because it affects my productivity, and that's that's even a harder realization when you spend twenty years trying to gain as much mass as possible, you know, and 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 while while keeping your health reasonably intact of course i could have pushed the drugs way harder and then be in a position that some guys are in now like really really scared for their health mm. the, Which, the thing is it's not coincidence that when we draw a human being we draw a stick a stick figure and there's a circle and then there's just sticks and that when you compare animals the difference between the head size and the body size as the animal gets more intelligent the head gets bigger compared to the body and then mm. what we do is we then grow our bodies so our head doesn't work anymore. <laughs> and, then we, and then we try, what's going on here? Well, your body's 300 pounds, so not us, but I mean, people yeah. are 300 pounds. So your brain is, I mean, you can see some of the, the brain is moving slowly because it's the resources of energy and there's insulin resistance probably in the brain. So it's like, we're literally not getting the energy to move sometimes, I assume. I, I think we're just pulling energy from productivity away, you know, to put it simply. Yeah. Yeah. And, and even if you train like moderately, like Derek, how, how hard do you push your workouts now? Because you train early, earlier, and then you do your work afterwards. Right? What was your schedule? Um, well, now I have to compress them into an hour window. So I have to go pretty hard, unfortunately. So it's like, yeah. um, when I was doing my like bulking period during the winter, I was trying to fit like 24 to 25 working sets in like an hour block, which was impossible. So I'd be doing like, especially when you're trying to gain progress on your lifts, try going on a heavy compound movement with like one minute rest, go one minute rest, go. Wait, like just, gets- just to explain for the audience, Derek can, he has to like reserve a gym for an hour. Yeah, so he, yeah, because he has to reserve it ahead of time and then he has to rush through his workout. So just to explain that. Yeah. So, and you have to wear a mask while you're doing it. So try getting enough oxygen in while you're in the middle of like a bent over barbell row with like you know, two, 200 and something pounds on it. And then taking 60 second rest in between, like it's fucking can, hard. Can you do this? Can you like, like just, yeah, that's, what, that's, what I, that's a, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm like, but like, I, I but people look at me sometimes. You, so feel, I, you feel like a little kid though. You're like, I hope they don't. <laughs> <laughs> which is ridiculous like, because everyone you're breathing so hard everyone can get what you you know it's it's yeah. I mean, but i know i know there needs to be some kind of social order so i understand but like i'm going in a corner like a kid like like you said hiding it and yeah. trying to <laughs> <laughs> it's so, it's right, so weird right boxing. like everybody everybody here in thailand wears a mask religiously you know every on all the public spaces but in a gym it's it's not required so we can train as hard as we want Besides the handicap that is the climate, you know, the 80%, 90% humidity and the, you know, the, the 37 degrees uh, weather. Um, so, 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 so uh, by the way, uh, yeah, this is interesting, right? In Asia, it seems like people are more willing to wear masks, I feel like. I don't know more, why. More also in, in Dubai, it's part of Asia. In Dubai, people are very willing to wear masks. I don't know why. But in the West, people are like very hesitant to it. They're like, this is not, we're not used to this thing. They're, they're used to it with the N1, H1 virus and, and some of the bird flu viruses. So they, they had a little bit pre-exposure to these kind of, uh, you know, scenarios. And they're, and generally they're a little bit more obedient, a little bit more nationalistic, you know, and, and the Westerners are just stubborn, man. It's just, like, and, no, and, no, no, I'm not going to wear a mask. With the arms, we actually used to wearing turbans. So we used to cover our faces. So we're just, I used to, we go yeah, to the desert, new. we cover our face when it gets windy. So we're used to it all the time. And then the women yeah. are also cover their face sometimes. So I don't <laughs> think it was too, it was too surprising yeah. to anyone. They're like, okay, you know, there's a reason now at least. Yeah, sure. So, so Derek, Steve, I want to ask, oh, sorry, go ahead. I, I was going to say before we get off topic on the whole, um, so that NAFL D thing, Steve, how mm-hmm. much like from peak, I think there's going to be a clip in its own probably as far as your progress because you just did the video recently about your mm. reverse mm. transformation essentially, which I'm sure you have more elaborate detail on that one. So check it out, guys, if you haven't seen it. 
but your peak like body composition metrics like what were you in terms of weight do, roughly do body fat percentage i'll, I'll if share you can the screen. screen share and we can do it that'd be great yeah yeah let me uh let's see so i got leo's pictures in the meantime so maybe we can judge 